So welcome to lecture number 15 that is framework utility in Selenium. In this lecture we will be learning how to kill the process in Selenium, how to generate random numbers, how to extract the information from the text or the strings, how to format the dates and then how to manage the properties or the how to create the variables, how to store the variables or the configuration data that is required for the testing. So let us switch to IntelliJ and start with killing the processes. So I, I have already created one class in which I have specified which processes I want to kill. So in this idea you can specify any process name that you want to kill. And what is happening is in this uh, particular code I am checking the operating system value. If it is Linux this particular block of code will be executing and otherwise if it is Windows this particular block of code will be executed. So this is actually applicable for the Mac as well. Mac and Linux are pretty much similar. So what happens is what we are doing here is that we are executing one Linux command. This command. Where we are extracting the process ID of that particular process name and then killing it forcibly using this command kill minus 9. And to execute that command what we are doing is using this particular syntax runtime.get runtime.exec and here is the array of commands we are passing and when you use this exec method it returns the process object from which we are trying to read the data of that particular output of that particular process and if it is windows what we are doing here is that we are trying to execute the command windows uh, powershell command that is task kill and over here we are using this switch slash f to forcibly kill the process so that is how you can kill the process and uh, uh, selenium and it is very important that before you st start the fresh the automation of any uh, project or you start executing any tests you need to kill some of the orphan processes and that's when this particular code is really important let's move on to date util this is also very important to calculate future date past date and let's say you want to calculate the future date that is two years ahead so you can give this input like that in in this format to this method and what it will do is it will create the calendar object and then extract this minus first value and then it will actually split that particular input and depending upon the second part it will add that particular years or months to the current date so if it is 2 it will add 2 years if it is minus 2 it will add uh, like subtract 2 years from the current date and then return the new date so for that we have used this add method and we have created this format date uh, custom method which is actually used to format your date object or calendar object and to format what it is you can see that uh, we have passed to calendar object over here and then extracted the day month here of that particular calendar object and then printed that particular date day month and year and let us run this particular code and then see how it calculates the future date that is two years ahead you can notice that the date is printed that is 22 of january 2019 and you can also create the custom calendar object using the this particular data year month date and then to print it you can use this format date method that we have created the custom method that we have created then number formatter now sometimes what happens is uh, you get the uh, selenium reads the values from the page web page but that value is not in the correct format like to compare the value with a number you need to actually convert this into the number and extra uh, like remove all the spaces and dollar sign and all that things so over here what we are doing is we are getting this particular value from the web page and then uh, we are replacing this dollar sign comma and all that thing so that it will be easy to convert into the double and then compare uh, later on so this replace all method all it does is that we can give this uh, a regular expression and then or there we can uh, like specify with what we want to replace it since we want to replace it with nothing we have specified this empty string and if you run it 
we'll notice that output is like 434 3.55 you can see the output is there and sometimes we need to extract only the digits and the dots that is the numbers from the given string so for that you can use this particular regular expression or here uh, this caret means match everything except these digits and dot and then replace it with nothing so the output of this particular test will be just 33.44 so this is again very useful line of code and sometimes we need to like find the first match second match like that for example in this string you want to find the first number that is this one and then also we are interested in the second number so to get that what we have to do is you have to use this particular pattern class and matcher class that is available in the uh, java for uh, handling the regular expressions and then we are using this find method of the matcher class to find the first match like this and to find the second match you have to again call this find method and then here it is printing the second match and what kind of match we are uh, trying to find and this pattern is given over here that is any number it may or may not contain the dot and uh, like it may or may not be a decimal number so that's why this question mark is given over there so you can actually put any regular ex expression that you want over there and then find the first match second match third match etc then let us move on to random number test sometimes uh, we need the test data that is random and unique as well sometimes we need just numerical data sometimes we need alphanumeric data so to create those numbers or test data what we can do is we can use this random string utils class that is available in this particular package or apache common lang3 dot so this package is also comes with selenium web driver so you you can access it as easily as as easily as possible and over there there are three important methods random alphabetic random alphanumeric and random numeric so all these methods actually get you uh, strings strings containing numbers and just numbers and you can also specify the length of the string in the first parameter here we have specified eight so it will return the numbers or the strings with that particular length or alternatively you can also use this calendar object to create the uh, random unique numbers because the given date and the minutes and seconds will not, never occur in future so you can also use this particular hook to create the random numbers so i'm just gonna execute this particular code As you can see this random number is created this is alphabetic this is alphanumeric and this one is numeric and it's a calendar as well and uh, finally we have used this uuid if you go here you have used the random uid and timestamp to create the random numbers all right let's move on to the variables test where we have specified or uh, we will be learning like how to print the system properties or environment variables so before we start let me explain you the difference between the properties and the environment variables so jvm properties are actually specific to the jvm or the program jvm is nothing but the java virtual machine so the property set at the jvm level can be accessed within that jvm any process or program that is running outside of the jvm jvm will not be able to access those particular properties but environment variables are actually something that can be accessed from outside of jvm as well as well as inside the jvm as well so that is the main difference between the system properties and environment variables so jvm system properties are very specific to jvm that is the difference and to list down out all the G properties are there you can use this particular this line of code system dot get properties dot list and then to uh, list down all the environmental variables you can use this particular syntax system dot get env returns the map of all the keys and values of the environment variables and then you can print it using this for loop and you can also create your custom properties dynamically like using the system dot set set property method you can give the property name and its value over here to uh, to get the property of particular uh, parameter or property you can use this particular syntax system dot get property name of the property 
and there are some uh, user defined or built in properties like os.name user.dir that is user.directory user.time zone user.home all these are built in uh, variables or our system properties you can access it directly using system.get property and finally uh, we can also store the properties in the file like this over here i have got one properties file and uh, here i have specified two uh, properties browser and user and its value is chrome and cell respectively and i have put it into the test resources directory and to access that what i have done is created this properties instance and then using this get class loader get resources stream over there i have specified the file name what happens is that when we call the load method all the variables come into this particular object proper properties object and you can use this get property method to access that particular variables so if i uh, if you run this one it will print browser and user value like that so this uh, variables and properties are also very important you can add the logic based upon the value of the variables or the properties and then execute your tests so that's how you can uh, use this uh, code snippets they are very important in developing the framework in selenium in java i hope you enjoyed this lecture and stay tuned for more lectures on selenium web driver so just to rewind up we have seen killing the processes generating random numbers extracting information using regular expressions then data utilities and properties and environment variables in this lecture thank you